Hi everyone! I wanted to record a quick demo of the Breakpoints plugin and just give a quick rundown on how to use it and also share a few pointers I've learned through a lot of trial and error so you can get the best result with the plugin. So the Breakpoints plugin is essentially a tool that allows designers to combine multiple breakpoint frames into one interactive responsive frame in Figma. So it's not only helpful for the development team to reference when they're implementing the breakpoints, but it's also really helpful in the process of identifying the best breakpoints for a design because you can see in real time how the elements of your design will scale and interact as you scale down the screen. So I first used the breakpoints plugin for the Koi CBD mega menu, which is the example I'll be showing. So before I jump into the functionality of the app, I highly recommend using this plugin in a different design file than your project's main design file. So for Koi CBD, I added the breakpoints frames and prototype in the same project space, but in a different design file. Um, this is because the prototype feature of the plugin generates a lot of extra design frames and it can really slow down the rest of your design file. So make sure to put it in its own file. So this is what the breakpoints plugin results will look like. I have the mega menu mocked up in every breakpoint possible in these different frames to the left. And this is the frame that the plugin creates that combines all of your frames. And at the top of the frame, you have a reference bar that marks where each breakpoint is and also notes what the pixel widths of each breakpoint screen is. So it automatically displays at the greatest width of your breakpoint screens. And all you have to do is scale the frame down and once it hits each breakpoint, it should move smoothly into the next frame. Uh, one note about sharing the breakpoints with development. Um, this single plugin frame is difficult for the dev team to reference unless they have editing access. So when it comes time to share the breakpoints with dev, uh, make sure to use the plugin prototype feature where you can create a really helpful interactive prototype that development um, or a client or anyone can reference. So below this frame is where the plugin will create the um, prototype. And I have an example on this page. And as you can see, the plugin creates a lot of pages in order to create this prototype. And this is what will slow your design file down. So I recommend creating the prototype after you finalize your breakpoints example, just so your file won't be as slow while you work on your breakpoints. So I'm now going to use the breakpoint frames from the Koi CBD mega menu and just walk through each step of the breakpoints plugin process. So here are the screens below. And before we use the plugin, the most important thing to do is check the constraints of every element in your design. The constraints help the plugin identify how each element should react when scaling the screen down. And the first rule of thumb is to make sure the vertical constraints of all elements are set to top, which I will explain. Uh, so for some reason, the breakpoint plugin has a hard time with any elements that have any other vertical constraints other than top. So if anything in your design is reacting weirdly, just first check that the vertical constraint is set to top. Um, I've noticed that when I've had my vertical constraint um, set to any other position, my words can stretch uh, also with my images and they can be stretched backwards and up and down. So for some reason, setting the vertical constraint to top is really helpful and usually explains a lot of um, issues I've had with the plugin. Um, as for vertical or horizontal constraints, uh, that is where you'll define the reactivity of all elements in your design. So I'll just take a look at this first um, biggest breakpoint screen to walk through the constraints I applied for these elements. So starting with the promo banner, we have this free shipping notice at the top left and these hyperlinks at the right. So when we scale the screen down, we want to maintain the margins between the edges of the screen and the text and the links. So in the promo bar, I've constrained the free shipping notice to the left of the screen to maintain the margin. And then same as the links on the right, I've constrained them to the right of the screen. So they kind of maintain that margin to the right. And as you can see in the example, when we shrink the screen down, the margins stay the same. Um, and 
since we're scaling the screen down from the right side, you can see that the elements that are constrained to the right um, move towards the left, but still maintain that space between the um, assets constrained to the left side and to the right. The nav bar is a really similar idea. So the nav links on the left side of the page are all constrained to the left side of the screen and the links on the right side of the page are constrained to the right side of the screen. But the Koi CBD logo is constrained to the center of the page, so as the screen scales down, the logo will maintain its position at the center of the screen. And when it comes to these image links, it's a bit different because we want to have the images respond to the screen scaling down without overlapping or distorting the images. So here I've applied the scale constraint uh, which scales down the width of the image container as the sides of the screen grow closer together. And then for the CTA button here, it's the same idea as the Koi CBD logo. We want it constrained to the center so that it kind of stays nicely in the middle. So here's an example of all of these constraints applied. We can see that any elements constrained to the right side of the screen are moving towards the left but still maintaining the space between the elements on the left side and the right side. So now that the constraints are correctly applied, let's make the initial plugin frame and then the prototype. So opening the breakpoints plugin, up here, plugins, breakpoints, you'll see a modal that um, says select existing layout or create a new one, and you're gonna click new adaptive layout. And this small screen that just popped up is where all of your screens will be combined. So I'll just put this next to the breakpoint frames. So first you're going to define each breakpoint size in the modal. And I find it helpful to name each of my frames with a reference number. So in my mega menu frames, I've given them names like more than 325, more than 916, and more than 1000. So that I know when the breakpoint example reaches that pixel width, this is the screen that will appear. So now I'm gonna add these reference numbers into the plugin. So starting with the height of the breakpoints example, um, I find it helpful to make sure all breakpoint frames have the same height and the app can be a bit glitchy when the frames are different heights. So I've just added a gray background behind the mega menu to ensure it'll display at the same height as the tablet screen or the mobile screen. So these two numbers in the corner represent kind of like the smallest frame size, and I just like to um, add number one here. I don't think it can take zero, so I think one is the lowest number that they can take um, for these kind of foundational numbers. And here's where we're gonna define the height. So I've added one, and then the height of the frames is 796. So now the plugin will know that the height of these um, designs are going to be 796 and I'm going to resize this example frame here to match that. And then next I'm just going to add these reference numbers in the frame names to the horizontal breakpoints. So we have 1, we have 325, 916, 1000, 1400, 1545, and then we're going to round it out with the width of the biggest screen, which is 1680. And next, we're going to use these little plus icons to attach frames to each of these um, breakpoint widths. So, 1 to 325 is the mobile screen, so we're going to click the plus button. And then you're just gonna select the frame that you want to be between those two breakpoints. And we'll just do that with every single screen. Great. So now the Breakpoints plugin has displayed all of your screens into one an interactive example. Um, so let's kind of test it out. We'll scale it up to 1680, which is the greatest width of the screen. And then we'll just start scaling it down and see how each 
transition happens. All right, that looks good. Now, if you catch any issues related to your constraints, all you have to do is go to the frame with the constraints issue and edit it in that original frame, and it'll be updated in the plugin in real time. Um, one of the issues I've found in working and iterating with this plugin is that you can't add a new breakpoint into the middle of this range of numbers. So for example, if we needed to add a new breakpoint between 916 and 1000, you would need to add a number with this plus icon here, which would add a new number at the end of this range, so after 1680. And then you would have to edit these numbers um, to account for the new sequence of breakpoint numbers, if that makes sense. And then you would need to reattach frames for each of these breakpoint widths. Next up, uh, when your breakpoints are finalized or approved, you can click this toggle here that says prototype and the plugin will generate a prototype for you. And the prototype creation process sometimes takes a few minutes. So I just have an example of this prototype um, to show you. Here it is in the design file. And as you can see, it is a lot of frames. And you can technically cut the pages of this prototype down, um, which I've tested to the right here. So I've basically deleted any excess screens and only kept the prototype screens of each breakpoint involved in the prototype. However, I have discovered that there is something to the plugins um, large amount of screens created for the prototype. Um, there's something about it that makes the transitions really smooth and interactive. So if you want to save some time, I recommend just using the plugins prototype. Uh, so let's test out what the prototype um, looks like for developers or clients. So the plugin applies its own UI to your prototype. That makes it easy to click between breakpoints down here. So each of these numbers is clickable and it'll scale down just like the um, example the plugin created in your design file. And this prototype is what developers will reference when the breakpoints have been finalized and approved. So that is the full breakpoints plugin process. And I actually had one more tip I wanted to add to the end of the video here in case anyone is working with smaller elements that need to scale as a group, which I'll explain. So for this example, I'm going to use the Sycamore category page. So while I was doing some more exploration of the plugin with the Sycamore site, I noticed that elements like these product swatches and review stars tend to overlap when the screen scales down. And this is because these product cards act as kind of a whole unit. So when you add a scale constraint to these product cards, um, all elements in the product card will kind of scale down quickly as a whole and they'll sometimes overlap because the smaller individual elements aren't aware of each other, if that makes sense. And in my research, I found that if you have these smaller groups of elements, like these swatches or review stars that need to kind of be aware of each other as they scale down, it's helpful to apply a frame and a column grid um, to the group of elements. And when you do this, the elements in the frame will attach themselves to the columns you add to the frame. For example, I've created a small frame and grid for these product swatches. And by adding these small six columns to the frame, um, the six product swatches have their own column that they'll attach themselves to. And as the screen scales down, the swatches will move with their designated column instead of overlapping each other because the product card is getting smaller. So I'll give you an example of this. I'll just scale the screen down. And as you can see, the product swatches kind of stick to their um, designated columns and they won't overlap each other. And in the case of the review stars, um, the review amount text was overlapping the stars. So I put them in a frame with a two column grid in order to maintain this small space between them while the card um, scales down. So this tiny margin right here next to the review amount is the space that we want to maintain while the product card gets smaller. 
So this trick is really helpful for identifying when things like product cards might need to scale down to a different size completely because you can apply these helpful frames to those smaller elements and then you can stress test them a bit to see where the elements will truly start overlapping and need a different container size or element size. And that is it for my demo slash tips and tricks for the Breakpoints plugin. Let me know if you have any questions or if I can help you with any of your Breakpoints work. Uh, thank you so much.